Let the church say Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we bless your name for this service today. We thank you because you have granted us a great opportunity to be here today. And Lord, we're asking that the strength we need for the journey, the grace we need for our pilgrimage, and the courage we need, the power we need to move every mountain, to climb every mountain, and to get to our destination. This morning, you impart upon every life in Jesus' name. Let weakness turn to strength. Let discouragement turn to courage. Let despair turn to strength in every life in Jesus' name. Empower your people today. I will pray, Lord, that all dimness of sight you brush away from every eye. And help us, Lord, to be the army, the soldiers for Christ we ought to be. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. A victorious and glorious and conquering Amen. God bless you. We're coming to Ezra. We're looking at Ezra chapter 3, Ezra chapter 4, Ezra chapter 5. That's a bonus. Ezra chapter 6. Look at Ezra chapter 3, verse 8. Now in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and Joshua, the son of Josadak, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of captivity. Notice that they were come out of captivity. Notice it again. They came out of captivity unto Jerusalem and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to search forward, search forward, set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Look at chapter 4. Look at verse 4. Chapter 4, verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. And they hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius king of Persia, Verse 6, and in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Chapter 5, then the prophets, Agai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. And then they rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and began to build, and began to build, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. And with those two major prophets were all the other prophets of God helping them. Chapter 6, verse 7. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governors of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build 
this house of God in his place. We're looking at the children of Judah as they came back from Babylon. They came back from captivity and they came to the capital, the headquarters. And you have seen, I've read to you what they did. The challenges were there, the difficulties were there, but they rose up in the strength of the Lord. They rose up in vision, in power. They were going to do what the Gentiles never thought of they could do in 70 years after the return from captivity. The children of Judah were better than when they were in captivity. Note that down on your notes, in your mind, in your heart. After they came back from captivity, those children of Judah were better than when they were in captivity. In their life of faith, they were better. In their obedience to God, they were better. In their worship, they were better. In their faithfulness to God, they were better. In their courage, the courage to serve the Lord in the worst of times, they were better. In their victory over temptation and trial and trouble, they were better. And in every area of their lives, as you see them coming to worship the Lord, they rose higher than before. They went farther than before. In every area of consideration, they were better. Conversion takes us out of captivity. Before a sinner is converted, it's a captive to sin. It's a captive to Satan. It's a captive to self. It's a captive to Satan and spirit. It's a captive to society. But conversion comes in. A turning around in the life of that sinner comes in. And when you are converted, coming out of the captivity of Satan's self and sin, you become better than you were when you were a sinner. True believers are different. And true believers are better than sinners. In faith, we're better. In character, we're better. In behavior, in our interpersonal relationships with, with people, once you come out of captivity, you become better than you were before. Also, in endurance, endurance, now you have vision, now you have a goal, and there is something ahead of you, and the grace of God has come into your heart, and you are better in endurance than you were before. Your family life becomes better. When you become a child of God, conversion takes you out of captivity and makes you better. Not only that, in patience and perseverance, you become better. We're talking about all members of the church who become better than you were before. But now, when you come into the church, there are ministers, there are members. And the ministers are higher in their conviction. They are higher in their vision. They are higher in grace. They are higher in focus and obedience. Ministers are higher and better than members in vision. Ministers are higher and better than the members in vigilance. You are vigilant over your life. You are vigilant over your family. You are vigilant over the flock. In vision and vigilance, ministers are higher and better than the members. In diligence, there is a work to do. And there is a mountain to climb. And there's an assignment to carry out. And as a minister, if you're a real minister, you're higher, you're greater, you're better than the members. And in holiness, holiness of life, holiness in comportment, holiness in family life, the minister is expected and is actually better and higher than the members in grace, in love, in giving, in Christ-likeness, we're higher as members, as ministers, we're greater as ministers. 
you are better than the best of the members. If you're a real minister, and then matured sons of God are greater and better than immature babes in Christ. As I look at these chapters I've read to you now, Ezra chapters 3, 4, 5, and 6, I'm talking to you today on becoming the best in the worst of times. Becoming the best in the worst of times. When the valleys are deep, when the mountains are high, when the roads are rough, when the whole nation is in a turmoil, when discouragement pervades the whole land, when difficulties challenge you the most in life, becoming the best in the worst of times. These uh, children of Judah came back home and they knew there was something to do. And it happened to them, it was the worst of times. Enemies rose up here, adversaries rose up here, challenges rose up here. And in that time, that was the worst of times for them, we see them in action. We see them in authority. And we see them with courage. They were the best in times that were the worst. And in your life, something is going to happen. Something must happen. The glory of God will shine the brightest in your life. The power of God will move the highest in your life. The grace of God will be manifested the highest in the worst of times. And whatever time you're living now, whatever situation you may find yourself now, today you are going to rise higher than you ever did in your life. Becoming the best in the worst of times. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the believer's ascent, ascending, going up, ascension. The believer's ascent in the worst of situations. The believer's ascent, climbing up to the highest place in the worst of situations. Number two, our bold affirmation against the worst stronghold. We don't dodge, we don't run, we don't try to escape. The strongholds are there in the face of that stronghold. The worst of strongholds, we have a bold affirmation. Our bold affirmation against the worst strongholds. Number three, our best advancement. You will advance. Your amen doesn't show somebody advancing. You will advance in Jesus' name. Wipe those tears away. Take the sorrow away. And whatever ties you and whatever binds you and whatever you are looking at that makes you to feel I never went through something like this in my life. These are the worst of all times. I've never seen, uh, you know, adversaries and accusation and accusers and all the people. I've never seen them rise up against me like this before. You are going to climb on their shoulders. You are going to see higher. You are going to see farther. And a greater strength is going to come to you in spite of those spoilers in Jesus' name. Our best advancement despite the worst spoilers. They wanted to spoil you. They wanted to spoil your family. They wanted to spoil your assignment. They wanted to spoil everything you have on hand. They want to rubbish everything and put everything you cherish in the mud. But that's the time you are going to have the greatest and the best advancement in your life in Jesus' name. Our best advancement despite the worst spoilers. 
Let's go to number one. The believer's ascent in the worst of situations. I'm reading from Ezra chapter 4 verse 4. Ezra chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in the building. But look at chapter 6 from verse 1. Then Darius, king made a decree and search was made in the house of the rolls where the treasures were laid up in Babylon and there was found at, at Mesa in the palace that is in the province of Medes a roll and therein was a record thus written in the first year of Cyrus king of the same king the king the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem let the house be built your life will be built your family will be built your profession will be built and the assignment God has given you from the time of Cyrus long ago and some people are trying to cover up and to bury that assignment will resurrect will come up in Jesus name let the house be built the place where they offer sacrifices and let the foundation thereof be strongly laid the height thereof three score cubits and the breast thereof three score cubits as I told you when we get saved we're cleansed when we get saved we're forgiven when we get saved, we become free. We're free from sin and free from sinning. Free from sin, one, sin of the past. Free from sinning. We don't continue to sin after we're born again. Believers now can climb up. I am climbing up. I am climbing up. Believers now can climb up in spite of number one adversaries number two in spite of the amalekites number three in spite of afflictions number four in spite of arrows and attacks number five in spite of adversity number six in spite of accusations number seven in spite of the anarchies they won't disturb you they won't stop you. They won't even retard or slow you down. We're moving up and we're going to ascend to the highest point in spite of all these in Jesus' name. Number one, believers ascend in spite of adversaries. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 22. Exodus chapter 23 I'm reading from verse 22 but if thou wilt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak then I will be an enemy to thine enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries so in spite of those adversaries God will say keep on doing the work you are doing I'll take them on. I'll settle them. I will chain them down. The Lord will be an adversary to all your adversaries in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number two, the Amalekites wanting to stop the progress of your journey. The Amalekites wanting to destroy and wanting to scatter the people of God before they get to the land of Canaan, the promised land. You will get to that promised land. Amalekites don't matter. Amalekites are nothing in the sight of the Almighty God. You will get to where the Lord has ordained. You will be in life in Jesus' name. 
Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him, and he fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and all went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. The church will prevail. Somebody greater than Moses, somebody higher than Moses, is at the right hand of the Almighty God, is raising up his hand before the Father, making intercession for you, and praying for you, and saying everything God had ordained before you were born, and your day did for you in life. He's saying, Father, look at him. The Amalekites are trying to destroy your purpose and your plan and your assignment for him, for her. And the Father, looking at Jesus, said, It's impossible. My son will get to where I have ordained. My daughter will get to where I have ordained. And they were told, verse 13, and Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people were the edge of the sword. Verse 14, and the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. You didn't hear that one. All the Amalekites in your life standing in the way, saying that you will not get to the promised land. God says, I will put out the remembrance of all those Amalekites from under heaven concerning you. In spite of adversaries, we're moving on. In spite of Amalekites, we're moving on. Number three, in spite of afflictions, we're moving on. Psalm 34, I'm reading from verse 19. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him. Tell me now. Say it aloud. If you believe that this is yours, this is your heritage this morning, say it aloud. From them all, by the time the Lord finishes dealing with those afflictions in your life, not one affliction will remain in your life. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers present tense, delivers him out of them all. Arrows and attacks. You know, sometimes Satan, with all his uh, cohorts, they stay somewhere hidden, and you can't see them. And they're shooting arrows at you. And if that thing strikes you, if it doesn't kill you, you'll be nursing the wonder of an arrow. Instead of getting up, doing your work, building what the Lord wants you to build, you will be spending all your prayers, all the fasting, all the attention, all your money in hospital bills. But from this day, that thing will stop. Psalm 91, Psalm 91, Psalm 91, I'm reading from verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, 
nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Look at this one. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. You will not fall before the end of the journey. You will not die halfway in this journey. That vision the Lord has showed you. That revelation the Lord has revealed to you. And that picture he had painted on the canvas and said, That is your place. Nothing will stop you from getting there. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread on the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall not trample under thy feet. I say amen for myself. Number five, in spite of adversity, you will make it. Psalm 94, I'm reading from verse 13. Psalm 94 verse 13, that thou mayest give him rest, from the days of adversity, you will rest. Jesus said, come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And all this adversity coming from this direction, and that direction, instead of you having rest, it's been unrest and turmoil. And then you're saying, I don't know what is going to come tomorrow now. I don't know what is going to come next month. Rest has now come. The days of adversity are over. I rejoice with you. I said, I rejoice with you. That thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the peach be digged for the wicked. The peach be digged for the wicked. I'm not the one saying this. We love everybody, but the wicked who dig a peach for the righteous, the righteous will fly over. Unfortunately for the wicked, they will fall into the pit that they have dug. Verse 14, for the Lord will not cast off his people. You are too precious in his sight to be cast off. Jesus died for you on the cross of Calvary. The Lord had been thinking about you before you knew him. And he says, now that you are one of his people, the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. Any amen? In spite of accusations, accusations, you know, sometimes they lay something at your gate that you didn't know the origin. You've been living your life, you're born again, you're a righteous child of God, and then you're hearing information. Did you hear what they said about you? Don't worry about that. Did you hear about the acquisition? How can I answer that? Don't even think about answering. The Almighty God will answer for you. Daniel, Daniel, chapter 6 we're reading from verse 24 Daniel chapter 6 verse 24 and the king commanded 
and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. They accused Daniel. They accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them and their children and their wives, and the lions were waiting for Daniel's accusers. The lions are waiting for your accusers. And the lions had the mastery over them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Daniel is gone. I'm the one here now. Say it for yourself. That men tremble and fear before the God of William. You mention your name. I have liberty to mention my name. I will escape every accusation. I will escape every accusation. And all those accusers, whatever they wanted of me, will happen to them. For yourself, I'm saying it on your behalf. Amen. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. And there you said, I make a decree. There's a decree concerning you. There's a decree concerning me that in every dominion, anywhere, every place, in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God, steadfast forever, and his kingdom that we shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall even be unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel, not that Daniel, this Daniel, where is he? Where is she? So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, king of Persia. In spite of the worst of situations, what situations could be worse than that? To be cast into the lion's den. He came out. You are coming out. In spite of adversaries, in spite of the Amalekites, in spite of afflictions, in spite of arrows and attacks, in spite of adversity, in spite of accusations, you'll be your best. In spite of the anarchies, anarchies. Look at Joshua, chapter 14. Joshua, chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 10. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, Lord, I am this day four score and five years old. As yet, as yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. You are the strong. As your days, so shall your strength be. As your years, so shall your strength be. 
you will not be weak. You will not grow cold. You will not be tired. You will not fade. This man of God, he is gone now. Who will be the next? You are the next. To demonstrate. To demonstrate the faithfulness of God. And to demonstrate the power of God. It said 40 and 5 years ago. You remember Joshua? What Moses said concerning me. And he said 45 years have gone. I am as strong today as I was at that time. I praise God for myself. We started in 1973. 2018, we became 45 years. 40 and 5 years at that time. In, in 2018. And now, we've gone beyond 40 and 5 years. As my convictions were 45, 46 years ago, those convictions are still there today. As my faith was, now it's even stronger, it's even greater. As my vision was, now the vision is even brighter. Like father, like children. You will go stronger. All the discouragement in your heart, all the things that weigh you down, they are lifted up from you in Jesus' name. And so he said in verse 12, Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For thou heardst in that day how the Anakims, Anakims were there, and that the cities were great and fenced, if so be, the Lord will be with me. The Lord will be with you. Then I, at 85 years of age, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. The believers are sent in the worst of situations. Point number two. Our bold affirmation against the worst strongholds 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 are there and the enemy occupies the stronghold and they say we're strong our castle is stronger our arms and ammunition they never miss and so because of this stronghold you cannot get to where you ought to get to, and you cannot build. I say everything Satan says about you is a lie. Every voice that comes out of that stronghold will prove to be a lie. You will trample upon those ones that are speaking from the stronghold. You'll be stronger than your stronghold. Ezra chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 3. Ezra chapter 4, verse 3. But Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves. We ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. And the king of kings has commanded you, you will build. Nobody will take your tools from your hand. Nobody will take your instrument from your hand. And the strength of character and the courage in your soul and your dedication and your diligence that will make sure that you'll finish before you lay your armor down. Everything you have that will make you build, nobody will take away from you in Jesus' name. Nehemiah chapter 2. 
As Ezra said it, Nehemiah also said it. It's a bold affirmation that whatever the strongholds are, we have started, we're going to finish. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 20, Then answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build, but ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. You have lost your amen. Nehemiah chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 6. So, built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. They need mind the strongholds. Sambalat, Tobiah, Geshem, all of them that rose up. They didn't mind them. They pursued the goal. And they pursued their destination. They made it. You will make it. You will make it. Hundred percent, you'll make it. Beyond hundred percent, you'll see me going stronger and stronger. Proverbs chapter twenty-eight, verse one. Proverbs twenty-eight, verse one. The wicked flee when no man pursues. Let me explain this to you. If any difficulty arises, if any challenge arises, if any opposition comes against you, if false accusation rises up against you, and you leave your post, and you flee, you join the congregation of the wicked. It's the wicked who have guilty conscience. It's the wicked who have done something terrible in the, in the private. When something rises up against them, they're only feeling the guilt. And if you run, if you dodge, if you leave your post, and you say, they have come, they have come, you make yourself a wicked person. You'll not be like that. From your thoughts, the thought of running away, obliterated and cancelled in Jesus' name. And the thought of ever wanting to dodge your responsibility at the time when the heat is on. All that thought of dodging, everything will vanish away. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but... But, let the righteous say so, but, let the righteous shout it out, but, the righteous as bold as a lion. What does that mean? When you come to Christ, when you get to Calvary, Christ does not only forgive you, and cleanse you and save you and write your name in the book of life he king of kings lord of lords the lion of the tribe of judah enters into you he takes your nature of weakness he takes that away and he gives you his nature of righteousness and boldness and courage and he gives you his name. And whatever you ask in his name, he will do it. You are righteous, number one, because his righteousness has been transferred unto you. You are righteous, number two, because the righteousness of God is imparted, imputed unto you. Number three, you are righteous. The righteous one is living and abiding in you. Number four, in a practical way, your character, your conduct, your behavior is righteous. 
and the devil cannot touch such a righteous man. An evil spirit cannot invade the life of such a righteous man. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. I am saved. I am saved. By his grace. By God's grace. I am righteous. Are you righteous? By his grace, I am righteous. And I am as bold as a lion. You will not run away from your accommodation. All those people that are saying, run out, run away, go out. We don't want you in this place. They are the people that will pack out for you. You will not run away from school. I said you will not run away from school. All those bullies that say they are not happy you are there and they are saying, what have you come for? What have you come for? They are the people that will drop out. You will remain. You will not avoid that examination you are supposed to take. I said you will not run away from the examination hall. Yeah. All the people that are saying, what, why are you wasting your money? Why are you booking for it again? You know you are not going to make it. They are the people that will withdraw. You are moving on. Yeah. I said you are moving on. Yeah. I said you are moving on. Yeah. The righteous as bold as a liar. Sister, is your in-law saying pack away from the family and they say we'll meet you in the dream we'll meet you in the day we'll torture you and torment you nobody will pack your load you will pack your load yourself and you run away it's a lie nobody will drive you away from your family Everything the Lord has ordained for you in the family will be realized in Jesus' name. Amen. Prosperity will still come back to that family. Amen. Love will still come back to that family. Amen. The goodness of God will still multiply in that family. Amen. The righteous is as bold as a lion. Is somebody there thinking, I'm going to go out of the church? Pastor, house fellowship, they don't want me. District, they don't want me. If I open my mouth and say any word, Pastor, you know, in our local church, they just brush me aside. It's like I'm a nobody. And I'm thinking of, you know, leaving the church. I will never leave deep alive. I said, I will never leave deep alive. Anybody that blocks your way, and says, run away, leave the church. He is the one that will live for you. Yeah. I am staying. I said I am staying. My prosperity is here. My progress is here. My promotion is here. My assignment is here. You will not run away from for anybody. The righteous is as bold as a lion. You will make it in Jesus' name. Psalm 112. Psalm 112, verse 6. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Your heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. You will not run away. If they are asking, where is he? Where is he? And they cannot find you. You say, I am here. I'm always here. I will always be here. 
You'll always be there in Jesus' name. John chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 4. John chapter 9, verse 4. I must work. The works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. We're bold and daring. We're bold, after all, at the time we repented, we were bold to repent. We got saved, we were bold to get saved. We consecrated our lives and laid everything on the altar. We were bold to consecrate. We were bold to get sanctified. And when the world was drawing us and pulling us, we were bold to separate from the world, from the sinners, from the gangs. We were bold to resist Satan. We were bold to resist the corruption in the office, in society, in every community. We have been bold and we still remain bold to be holy, bold to be different. And we're bold to build the kingdom of God. We're bold to defend the truth. Bold to glorify God. And bold to daily prepare for heaven. Your boldness, nobody will take away from you. Jude, Jude verse 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly, faithfully, fervently, wholeheartedly, unwaveringly, earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Keep on contending for the faith. Keep on standing for righteousness and keep on standing for the Lord who has brought you out of darkness through conversion into the kingdom. You will never be conquered in Jesus' name. And always make a bold affirmation, a bold affirmation, a bold confession that your stand and you are not going to shift your ground in Jesus' name. Point number three. Our best advancement, despite the worst of spoilers. Our best advancement, despite the worst of spoilers. Spoilers, let me show you one verse in Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. And I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 33. Verse 1, what to thee the spoilest, and thou was not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Our salvation, our security in the time of trouble. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Ezra chapter 3, verse 8. Ezra chapter 3, verse 8. Now, in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Jeshua the son of Josadak. And the remnant of their brethren, 
the priests and the Levites and all they that were come out of captivity unto Jerusalem and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to search forward the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together to set forward, set forward, set forward the workmen in the house of God. The sons of Anadad with their sons and their brethren, the Levites, setting forward, moving forward, setting forward, and moving forward. Anybody moving forward today? Anybody going higher today? Anybody achieving something greater today? Advancement, the best advancement. Despite the worst of spoilers, in times like this, we aim at and we pursue the best for God. That's the time to make up your mind. And as we pray after this message, you search your heart and you search your dealings with God. What the Lord has been telling you, what's the best you are going to offer to God? Because it's at a time like this we aim at and we pursue the best of consecration to consecrate for the holiest, the holiest who have ever been. And then we work for the greatest glory of God. You have been working for the glory of God, singing for the glory of God, ministering for the glory of God, witnessing for the glory of God, living for the glory of God. Today is the day to rise higher. And you're going to work for the greatest glory of God in Jesus' name. You're going to live for the highest standard. You add a standard, the standard of the word of God, since you got saved, living a righteous life, living a sinless life, and living a holy life, and living a convincing life, and living a conquering life. But now, we're rising higher. If they thought we were high before, now we're going to go to the highest standard. We will seek the humblest and the lowliest position. We will follow the surest way, the straight and the narrow way, the highway of holiness. We will contend for the purest faith, contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints and will give our very best, the best of all we have, we are going to give unto God. We are going to build. We'll build our personal lives. Your life will not be in shambles. Your life will not be in confusion. Your life will not be scattered here and there. You gather everything together and build this life for the glory of God. We'll build our families. A family will not be a trodden down family. A family will not be a scattered family. Husband there, wife there, children there, boys there, girls there. Gather those family. Gather those members of the family together. Let's build the family. And your family will be a beacon of light in society. Provision will be available for you. You will educate your children. You will get the very best for your family in Jesus' name. We are going to rise and build the flock of God. This church in every locality will be number one. Your local church will be number one among all the churches there. And this church at the headquarters will be number one in this state and this nation in Jesus' name. Nothing will weaken our hands. This flock of God will be built. In the worst of situations, we will build. In despite the worst of spoilers, we will build. 
against the walls of strongholds we will build in Jesus name we're going to build our future our children are the future of the church and the future of the nation our youths are the future of the church and the future of the of the nation we're going to build our future will contribute and will pay the price whatever it will take whatever courage it will take and whatever stamina it will take whatever plan it will take we will build the future of the church and the future of the nation in jesus name will build a spiritual temple for god will build the kingdom for god a kingdom that will not come to an end we're going to start the work today as if we never walked before we're going to begin today as if we have never done anything now we're ready to build am i talking to somebody there am i talking for somebody there Exodus chapter 1 Exodus chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 11 Exodus chapter 1 and I'm reading from verse 11 in verse 11 therefore they did search over them taskmasters to afflict them with their bodies and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities Python and Ramses and then it says in verse 12, But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Did you hear that one? But the more they afflict you, the more you multiply and grow. But the more they oppose you, the more you multiply and grow. You'll be stronger than the Egyptians. You'll be stronger than your spoilers. You'll be stronger than your adversaries. They will come and bend the knee unto you. You will reign over them. You succeed and go beyond them. Spiritually, you will succeed. Educationally, you will succeed. Professionally, you will succeed. Domestically, you will succeed. In everything you set your hand upon, you'll be number one. Genesis. Genesis chapter 45 I'm reading from verse 4 Genesis chapter 45 verse 4 and Joseph said unto his brethren come near to me I pray you and he came near and he said I am Joseph your brother whom you sold into Egypt now therefore be not great nor angry with yourselves that you sold me thither for God did send me before you to preserve life God is sending you I said God is sending you remember now in the house of Potiphar accusation adversity big lie told against him he didn't run away i won't run away i will not run away this day of adversity will pass they sent him to the prison and he couldn't appeal in any appeal court he knew it was a lie everybody thought he was a bad man he didn't try to jump and scale the fence in the prison you will not run away whatever happened yesterday whatever happened until this morning now you come on victory ground i said you come on victory ground he said 
Now therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me thither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. God is preparing you for something higher. Look at verse 6. For these two years, as the farming being in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve your posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So now it was not you, spoilers, it was not you, accusers, it was not you, oppressors, it was not you, persecutors that sent me hither. But God, and he has made me a father unto Pharaoh. You didn't hear that one. He has made me a father unto the emperor of the greatest empire in the world at that time. And lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. His chief, his chief, his chief, make his, and go up to my father and tell him and say unto him, Thus says thy son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, tarry not. He said, I am Joseph. Where is he? What are you? Say, I am. Say it, say it, say it. I am. And God has promoted me. Don't just say amen. Say, God has promoted me. In this land, I will be all God has ordained that I will be. In the body of Christ, in the body of Christ, I will be all God has ordained I will be. In this church, in this church, deeper life church, higher life church, greater life church, holiest church, deeper. I will be all God has ordained I will be. Wipe those tears away today. Take all the sorrow away today. It's time to rise higher. It's time to go higher. It's time to say, I will not look back. I'm looking up. I am going up. Why are you stand up and declare to the Lord in the worst of times, in the worst of situations, in the worst of spoilers, in the worst of circumstances, or the worst of strongholds, I will be. I will be, I will be, and I will do all that God has ordained, I will be. This is your time, this is your time, this is your time. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, nothing will bury you, nothing will destroy you, nothing will turn you back. You will be all God has ordained, you will be.